Uh, we have a really special tea and tights European wrestling special as my guests help build a scene in their home country of Hungary, found in the Hungarian Championship Wrestling and later Passion Pro Wrestling. They have they are one of the most accomplished tag teams throughout Europe, competing for the likes of Pro Wrestling in Holland, Rising Sun in Italy, the German Wrestling Federation, WXW Germany, Rev Pro UK, and more. They've held tag team championships in three different countries for four different promotions. Please welcome the Arrows of Hungary, Dover and Icarus. How are you? Hey guys, Hi everyone. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm very well. Uh, we of course we're team ties. We're the Great British Wrestling Podcast for. Typically great British wrestling, but we do love to talk about Europe as well. It's always good to keep our eye on it. And as you may know, every week on our usual British Roundup, we finish with a nice little what's happening in around Europe, usually involving British talent, but uh, we do keep an eye on what's going on. So I was at the World Tag Team Festival uh, very recently. I was at a media lunch with Tassilo Jung and a few other uh, personalities. And I kind of overheard... Tassilo speaking to somebody else about how there was no scene until you guys built a scene. So, uh, it, yeah, tell me about that. A uh, yeah, she... so, so the thing is, like, pro wrestling was a really big thing back then in Hungary. And I'm talking about uh, the 40s and even the 30s. So because... Our history is really rich with amateur, I mean, Greek or Roman wrestling. Uh, it was kind of obvious that some of the, some of the wrestlers who couldn't make the Olympics are turned into catch as catch cam wrestlers. And after a while, it became like professional wrestling. And basically, they filled up the stadiums, uh, like inviting a lot of lot of amazing workers from the UK, from France, from Germany. But after the Second World War, we got occupied by all the regimes, by the Nazis and later than uh, the communists. And all of these regimes were like, okay, this is some Western bullshit. Hungarians don't need it. So basically, pro wrestling got like totally deleted from the history of Hungary. So... Yeah, we had to rebuild everything. And basically, when we were around like 12, 11, we played a PlayStation game, a WWF game, and we were like, okay, like, what is this? Like, is it real? Like, people can survive this? And how is this working? So we just went on to and just dived deep into it and joined some forums, which was like super rare back in the days, especially in Hungary. Still, it's still a new thing. And yeah, slowly we got a lot of materials and of course we tried it as like little kids jumping off the beds and like trained in my high school gym. Even we had a match on a sports day, but of course like some youngsters, so it wasn't that serious. So later we became musicians, stuntsmen, so we did a lot of stuff. And after a while, it just, it just turned back on us and it, it was a backlash and okay, this is this is really what we need to do and this is our passion this is our destiny we need to be pro wrestlers so from 2010 uh we started to gather all the people around who can basically move or do even a front roll and connect it to professional wrestling and slowly we started to build it up and that's when hungarian championship wrestling born Amazing. Yeah, I was going to ask about the Greco-Roman background because this is something during my research I did look up and I was like, I'm sure Hungary's got a huge history. And uh, yeah, just to, so to hear you guys create this new, I mean, how did things start? Uh, what was your first crowd? And nowadays it's what, 500 upwards of people every week? or <clears throat> Not every week. Not. Uh, yeah, we have right now actually three promotions in Hungary already. Uh, one is HCW, the original one. We have also Passion Pro now, and we have another one called XWP, I think. Yeah, I guess. Uh, HCW is, of course, the biggest one, the original one. And we have like five or six shows a year with HCW with five, 600 people in the crowd. Back in the days when we, we started, 
we had, like it was 11 years ago, we had pretty good connections right from the beginning, pretty good uh, TV connections. And we had a lot of people are around us who had good connections to TV. So we went to the TV pretty early and we were of course not ready for it. So uh, the quality of the shows were, hmm, let's say not that good. <laughs> I mean, the quality were great, just the product I mean, itself wasn't wrestling ready. Wise, yeah. Wrestling wise, it was not yeah. ready for television. So yes, it, it got deleted pretty quick from television after a year or something like that. But we had the opportunity to gain a lot of people, a lot of viewers and a lot of followers. And it, it happened when social media just blew up and it helped a ton. So as, as the first actual wrestling promotion in Hungary 10 years ago, we did pretty good. So um, the quality of the shows wrestling wise, it was not the best in Europe, but what we did, I think networking and getting people in, I think we, we did a decent job and that's what lead into like three different promotions and big crowds and stuff like that. So actually a lot of, a lot of networking and a lot of work, what we did 11 years ago, that's what helped. Yeah. So then you guys, so like within a year or two, you started making your way to pro wrestling Holland, uh, where you met uh, Alistair Black uh, or Tommy End at that time. Uh, so was that partly so to learn more at the time? Or yeah, we we exactly know that the only way to like becoming professional is to do the professional way, and because there were no teachers around us. I mean, back in the days with Austria, we didn't have any connection, and also their mindset with pro wrestling was a different and still a bit different. Uh, and somehow out of nowhere, first Gabriel Angel Fire just dropped us a mail and he's also from Netherlands. He's also one of the founders of Pro Wrestling Holland, BWH, that he want to come over having a match here and then maybe he can do a seminar. And this is what happened. And we were like, oh, okay, this is, this is the direction where we want to go. So later we met Tenkwa, who's also, you can see him uh, also on WX Dub show sometimes. Uh, he's also a big legend, got huge knowledge about Lucha, but also about European wrestling, Japanese wrestling. So then he became our mentor. And later uh, we got the contact with uh, Tommy and Alistair Black, Malachi Black, you name it. And he took us under his wing. And basically till today we were, we were in contact with him and and yeah, it just blew up. So immediately, like not even a year passed then, El Generico uh, had his like farewell tour before he got signed by WWE. And we were one of his uh, milestone there. So, so El Generico was basically our second or third fly in ever. So yeah, it, it escalated pretty quickly. That's awesome to hear. Uh, now, you both started off as singles careers, uh, um, and it wasn't until late that you became the Arrows of Hungary. Uh, now, Dovi, you kind of went the hardcore route with HCW, uh, becoming the first hardcore champion, and Icarus, you went on to become the uh, world champion. You want to talk about some of the early singles parts of your careers? I don't know if we can really talk about singles career, because we always did everything together. And we had singles career because it was only us. <laughs> <laughs> so we had no, any other chance to do that. I think uh, how I look back to the hardcore days in the early days of uh, wrestling in Hungary, it took a huge part of drawing people in. So actually that was all marketing. <laughs> and of course we enjoyed it. I don't want to say we're, didn't but it played a huge role to gain a lot of exposure and get a lot of uh, media on our shows a lot of uh, interviews and contact uh, a lot of like a lot of people watched us because of hardcore wrestling 
and not not only because they were really wrestling fans so like it was a 50 50 at the beginning mm. so that's why we had multiple hundred people in the early days because people were like oh, okay it's it's not fake <laughs> so True. and it worked and mm. we drew in a lot of people and that's how it was possible that was the only way we could show the crowd because we didn't know shit about wrestling <laughs> like it took it took like five or six years until we actually learned how to wrestle and how to work because we never had a wrestling academy where we went to so like we had to always travel and go out and train with people in the netherlands in germany and it took a lot of years until we we've got that knowledge like not like our kids like our Tihani and all, all the guys who are <laughs> coming to the academy training two times a week and learn the whole business in a year we had to do that in in a much longer way and and a harder way maybe it's been a, a successful way i mean i mean wxw uh, they started the exact same way uh, you can even early progress you can say we're quite hardcore and deathmatch with jimmy havoc in charge and gcw right now uh, a lot of what get named and got their memo to priority was hardcore wrestling mixing in with uh, more traditional wrestling uh, t- towards the end and uh, I think it's been a great model for a lot of uh, promotions to use now uh, you first became a tag team you first teamed against uh, Alistair Black and Michael Dante the Sumerian death squad in HCW but you didn't become the Arrows of Hungary until you went to pro wrestling in Holland so uh, tell us about that and tell us so about actually, the yeah. Sumerian death squad so actually, uh, like, of course, we've been always together. We grew up together. We're friends more than 26 years now. So, yeah, that's that's kind of like a, a really tight bond. So basically, we were in, in real life tag team since day one. Actually, our first tag match was in a 0-1 tryout in Spain. Uh, that was the first time we, we stepped in a ring together as a tech team and we were like, yeah, okay, this can work maybe outside of Hungary because back in the days, HC Dub still needed the storylines, the singles wrestlers. So there was no, no opportunity to showcase our, our love for tech team wrestling. But in the Netherlands, they started to using us as a tech team because, of course, we're both from Hungary, so it makes sense. And we figured out, like, after the second time, like, okay, let's let's make this like a relevant thing. So we started to think about uh, how to make it look unique. And of course, what makes our unique is that we are from Hungary. So there was an ancient calligraph somewhere, which was like, oh Lord, please save us from the arrows of the Hungarians. That's, that's an old school, more than thousand years old uh, calligraph. And we were like, okay, like Arrows of Hunger sounds like something connected with, with our history. So we just went for it. And actually our debut match was against, uh, uh, it was in Amsterdam and it was against Paul London, Brian Kendrick and the local ones like Pengel, uh, Kid Lux uh, and two other I guys. Think, I think Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy and uh, uh, Jeff McCready, yeah. So 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 it was amazing it was just amazing experience still got the picture after the match so yeah that was that was something oh, paul london i loved them in the uh their wwe run it was just because i was always a smaller guy so I, I you know the rockers and guys like kendrick guys like the hardys were always my favorite as uh when i was growing up uh but in 2015, WXW, they opened their WXW Academy uh, and you guys kind of headed straight over there to go work with guys like Walter. Kind, kind of straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we uh, started to train with Tommy, like Alistair, we, we, we knew that if we want to accomplish something in Europe, in, in the wrestling scene, that then we have to go to WXW somehow, some way, at some point. And, and that was the way, actually. We had some uh, 
connections to them and because of hcw and because of like maybe cross promotion the stuff like that but it never worked out so uh actually that was the way like if we understood that if we want to work for the best promotion in europe then we have to go there learn there get our faces shown and that's the only chance and that's the only way if we want to work to them so that's why we went there to be a part of wxw and to learn from them and to work for them we had a couple of rounds like we had some guest matches um for example like in czech republic in prague uh, against bad bones and absolute andy and some of the other hungarian guys like tamash sabo were also there so so there were a couple of attempts and later after them they also booked us and invited us for a couple of tours but we still didn't become like regular roster members we were kind of like fill-ins because they sensed it like okay something is in these guys but still it's not escalating anywhere and then yeah we figured out okay we need to polish everything in our style in our mindset so we messaged walter like hello sir maybe you don't know us but we would like to have like private sessions with you and he was like yeah sure i know who you guys are and just come over and we'll figure things out and it was around karat weekend so with the buzz of karat we just stayed there for a week and we got a lot of help from aj who's now uh, coaching in wwe and mike bailey who also helped the salah steel today helping a lot so we met a lot of amazing guys and and yeah like thatcher as well uh, and of course robert dreisaker and it just escalated pretty quickly and 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 we just figured out okay like what's going to be the next next goal what was the the real direction where we should head off and that was of course towards the tag team championships in wxw uh, and you started to become mainstays in 2018 uh, but you finally won the championship after three separate occasions uh, you finally defeated fast time modo uh, stephanie mays it was june of 16 carat was it or was it a week before uh God, actually it's like it was, uh, it was during during carrot. Yeah. It was. It was. No, I mean, like, basically, like, for seven years, we, we, got, we went there, and we always got into the title matches, but never won. And mm -hmm. during the COVID era, uh, the closed-door tapings, on a shortcut to the top, we won the titles from Dreisiger and Anil Marik. And we held it for a year. And yeah, on Karat. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. we, lo you we lost dropped it, it for. On... Yes, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> but how yes. did it feel winning those uh, WXWs for that first time? I mean, it must have been. Felt pretty heavy. Like, <laughs> actually, uh, win winning those titles after seven years of pretty consistent work, it felt pretty good. I think we're we're not often getting pretty emotional but at that point that was pretty emotional and yes. i think something so the locker room changed in the last couple of years and during the COVID tapings we had those guys with us like the french guys and all the other young talent who were pretty close to us and living that moment with them was also much more special than just winning the title in a whatever environment so like they were also pretty happy to us so it, it, it was it was a pretty heartwarming moment to us actually so i'm guessing i was going to talk about the young lads that are coming up in hcw but it's it's peter tahani uh Gordias, maverick uh ivor Kloski, and orsi as well as a few couple others who i'm not so familiar with i mean guess it was all those guys that you're talking about these guys that have learned what from the two of you over in hcw academy actually anybody who's coming from hungary is learning from us because <laughs> we're 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 the pioneers and and that's pretty good because i mean that's our mission our identity is like teaching so it's kind of obvious that we're not going to be superstars but if we can like 
make them away, like show them the path. We're, we're already happy. And like a lot of guys getting opportunities now, especially in Passion Pro, because that's one of the main focus of Passion Pro. Uh, and you can see Milan, Terry Bill, Tomas, and a, and a lot, of, lot of guys are, are getting more and more opportunity there. And then they will get more opportunity in HCW. And some of them already got opportunities in WXW, which is a huge thing. So, so and it's all, and it's only up for them. But basically, you can find all those new upcomers, rising stars on our social media because they are everywhere where we are. <laughs> you can see them in my background right now. We've got Goodyear's Bull of the Village, and we've got the the Peter Tahani, the. Uh... Rick and Morty inspired one, which is actually my wife's. Yeah, after the World Tag Team Festival, he is now my wife's favorite wrestler. So, uh, <laughs> congratulations on that, honey. Uh, we want to see him against Leon Slater here in the UK sometime soon because oh. uh, obviously he just made his progress debut as well, competed in the Natural Progression series. I have, I really want to watch his match versus RKJ. Uh, it's going to be out next weekend on both the Demand Progress and WWE Network. Go check that match out. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it That's myself. Awesome. Uh, now let's talk about some of the uh, the guys that have been the, the, the mainstays, the core of HCW. If you were to uh, enlist a couple of Hall of Famers, who would they be? Apart right. from yourselves, obviously. <laughs> From from HCW. From HCW. Who are the guys that uh, really helped? We have we have some Hall of Famers already. Okay. Because like of, of course we have some people who who never worked to HCW but did a lot for wrestling in Hungary, like Arpad Weber, mm. who was a pretty famous wrestler in Germany, like uh, 70s, 80s. He was pretty famous and he was also a promoter. And yes, just watch, watch that. Yes. And he was the one who tried to promote shows in the 90s in Hungary, but no success at all. People, people were booing around and everything. So yes, and also a lot of a lot of Hungarians. So actually, Arpad Weber is in the Hall of Fame, and also we have we have our let's say uh, basic people who were around us and who joined us in the early years, like Audrey Bride, who was also working for yeah, WXW, first female wrestler, yes, first female wrestler from Hungary, and also we have David Turger who is now running HCW, actually. We had also, he worked under Coppine. He's also a Hall of Famer, but he also helped a lot in promoting and organizing shows. We had also uh, Andrash, like he called uh, Michael Nuts. He wrestled under Michael Nuts. Actually, I think he's a pretty important people in Hungarian wrestling because Back in the early days, he had a lot in training. Like when we trained ourselves, he he played a huge role. And also he's always uh, helping logistics during the shows and stuff like that. So he is a pretty important person in, in Hungarian wrestling. And he, he was one of our ref, referees in the last, latest Passion Pro show. So... He was finally a part of the show. Uh, well, also Tomasz Sobo. He was also, he was there from day one. Uh, I think pretty much that's it. Like, Yeah, we got very... some celebrity helps from Norbert yeah. Nevenyi, yes. whose father yes. was a pro wrestler, wrestled on the uh, White Angel. But back in the days, it was a thing in, in Europe that there was a lot of white angels. So you could mix them. And he was one of the white angels. So he knew already a lot of stuff. And his retirement match was again uh, against an MMA fighter who was also one of HCW's big champion back in the days. And it's up on YouTube, actually, for free from Day of Glory 2018. 
where we also wrestled Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. So that was a really huge show. And so actually just like when we, we found the HCW, that was us. And there was like five, six other guys who were pretty into making Hungarian wrestling a big thing. So that was like um, eight to 10 people, uh, a crew who started to work on wrestling in Hungary. And that's how we, we built HCW. Uh, Pete Dunn and uh, so you took on Mustache Mountain. Uh, what was that like competing against uh, those two young Brits? Actually, it was one of our best matches, especially back in the day, those days. It's a fun thing because Dover already met them in Poland, right? So we got an early connection with them before they blew up and became famous. So when the time came, we were already like established and we already met Tyler Bate in Dub X Dub uh, on the mentioned Prague show. So we got some connections and we got some here and there. And the fun thing is like Pete was the NXT UK champion at that time. And, and even with that, he could make the appearance on our shows and doing a tag match. And it was super fun, super easy to work. And, and it was a lovely match. Of course, watching back now with the skill set, what we have now, I would do everything way different. But at, at, at that time, it was the pinnacle. It was the top. Now, you've recently launched a new promotion, which is Passion Pro, last year, in fact, 2021, uh, which is a bit more like, a, I guess, a super indie. Uh, is getting all the top uh, European names to come and work with that younger, the new generation that is coming through over in uh, Hungary. Is that correct? Is that a good way yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We have a couple uh, different goals with Passion Pro. First, we'd like to show these guys to the Hungarian crowd. So like we, we want to make a promotion where we can showcase all the friends of us, <laughs> like actually a pretty good talent from all over Europe and of course UK and to show something different to the Hungarian crowd. And also we want to create a, uh, platform to our students to work those guys so like get some connections between them and to like open the doors even more to to our trainees and to go all over the world and showcase themselves so actually that's the two original goals behind passion pro yeah, cause, well, it, it worked for me. I, I, when I first, first, I think it was because Corey McRae had been, uh, was going to make a, a, a show. He's become quite a regular for you guys uh, since uh, starting up. And he is somebody we, we quite liked early on. I was like, okay, he's going to, let's go check this out. And I thought it was the first time I saw Peter Tahani, and I'm like, wow, this guy's such. And uh, uh, for a long time, I was saying, put him in the natural progression series, progress and. It did it, <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I do think so. And when you've got someone like Dave Bradshaw who can provide English commentary, you can provide the backstories uh, for a lot of these young guys as well as the larger talents. It's, uh, I'm guessing, because of your connections with WXW that came about. Exactly, exactly. Also, it's it's not a secret, but it's not a coincidence that our referees are WXW referees. So we have a huge backwind from Dub X Dub, and and it's also basically we're we we're trying to make also a platform to to like how should I say um, we're testing a lot of things, mm. and if it can work, we can we can raise it to another level. So we're testing comedy matches, we're testing dramatic matches, we're testing indie matches, booking pairs up, basically everything. So everybody can just learn from there. And of course, having fun, which is one of the most important things. And then one of the other things is I'm hearing when the guys that you're working with, so like the young guys, it's also not just, it's about learning referees, about learning how to do TV production. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. We, we, we have a media clue, crew. It's uh, led by Robert Flotschker. It's called the CMR Media. And 
since day one, even with HCW, media was a huge thing because we know that even the best wrestling with shitty background can be just a waste of time. So it happened the opposite way that we got kind of shitty wrestling, but the product looked amazing. But since day one, like the media is also evolved with us. So it's more than 10 years work in the media. So for now, we know how to produce like a proper uh, product, which can be sold anywhere. And yeah, Robert is making an amazing work, uh, guiding all these guys with camera works, with audio technica. And even now for WXW, uh, some of the cameras, actually camera ladies are from Hungary and they coming from, from this area. Yeah, so I just think it's fascinating to see how you know you 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 have built all this up, and it's a, it's a great story for not just yourselves for the for things like this podcast, but with Fashion Pro, you've had uh, as you say some of the best talents in from the UK. You recently had Charlie Sterling of the Smoking Aces in a main event against Peter Honey. Uh, but yeah, guys like Robert Dreisker, so you can certainly see there's the WXW connection and sense of Volto. Uh, so, I mean, your Passion Cup has now been won twice by two Frenchmen. And Tristan Archer and Sense of Alto. Uh, we'll talk about, let's talk about Tristan Archer. He's so, I mean, he's uh, on a tear right now. He's having great matches all across the, uh, you know, European continent. He's now Passion Cup winner, uh, the champion at HCW, the champion of uh, WXW. Uh, what's it been like to have uh, Robert? Well, him come over um i think that was just a, a matter of time that like to realize that tristan is in 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 on the in this scene he is a true main eventer guy like he's a total package entertaining good crowd connection intelligent looks good polite good human being Anime everything <laughs> yeah so so he's he's everything you need and and the guy you want to like represent your promotion with so like of course he's winning championships all over europe <laughs> uh so so who do you think are the other kind of top stars of the continent i mean right now you're working with robert dreisker he's been you know dominating for a long time and uh you you but you you ended up in the main event scene of uh, WXW working alongside Amboss. What's it been like as uh, this new faction in WXW? Um, actually, it escalated pretty naturally, to be honest, because uh, with Robert, we we talked a lot about how to run the academy and how we run the dojo. So we we talked a lot about teaching and we talked a lot about visions about pro wrestling how it should be or how it was in the past and we also like really detail freaks and slowly it just became a natural thing that we talked about everything and 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 we have a group chat and one day he was like okay guys i've got this idea and we were like yeah sure 100 percent and then okay we got like a secret weapon which is going to be lawrence roman who we already know from years back then because we already had a feud with them in uh, Czech Republic with the Vashberans that was there, the raccoons that was their their thing, and yeah, Lowry is 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 is, is a kept secret, but he he's amazing and he's also a veteran. So we were like, yeah, just just ride this wave because this can hit big. And the funny thing is, we didn't have to figure out a gimmick or whatever. Because what we're saying and what we're representing is basically our thoughts, of course, in a pro wrestling way, but still, you know, it, it, it was natural. So it just escalated so, so effortless and it's not forced. And I think that's, that's the key. Why is it working? Uh, and then we say, so dry school, who are the other kind of top guys you think in and around Europe right now that the, the UK audience should be paying attention to? In the UK or continental Europe? Oh, on continental for the UK to be paying attention to. Of course, the French guys, like they they do pretty good. All three of them, and also they have a lot of good French talent over there. 
like also uh, young guys from there. Uh, who else should I say? I think the top guys are almost already in WXW. Yeah. So that's why we are working with a lot of WXW talent right now and the French guys. And now we're, we're also searching in other countries, but maybe Red Scorpion from Italy. I think he's, he's pretty decent and he's pretty, he's also a pretty good package. If you, if you want to use someone who has a pretty good physique, good crowd connection and a pretty good character, then you, you have to look, you, you should, you should, you should look after him. Uh, I, I will mention Dennis Dulnik from Switzerland. He's, uh, he's injured still at the moment, but, but he's genius. I mean, he's my favorite wrestler, so I can't wait till he's coming back and I'm really missing him and we all missing him big time. Also Drake Destroyer, he's also from Switzerland. He's a big guy, but he can move. So basically, I mean, if you watch the Passion Pro shows, which are free up on YouTube, you can see a lot of talents. And, and I'm pretty sure if you watch the show, you will see like, ah, I got, I got why this guy got booked here. So, so basically, if you want to get some fresh European faces, uh, check out Passion Pro, because that's one of the reasons why we found it. Indeed, and ask Corey McRae, Connor Mills, and Charlie Sterling, who have all come over and worked with Passion Pro. And uh, I know Corey had a lot of good things to say about you guys. But let's talk about, uh, uh, on a wider scale, if you were to build a European Mount Rushmore of continental European wrestlers, uh, who would you look at for something like that? Okay, so from old school era, I would say Otto Wanz from Austria because he did a lot for this business. Uh, I would say Arpad Weber because he was one of our pioneer. Uh, he's not from, I mean, he's from continental Europe, but he played a lot, a, a big role in UK, Tibor Sakac, who was the first Royal Darbler Hall champion. Uh, and for the fourth, hmm, there's so many amazing Europeans especially back in the days. Uh, okay, it's going to be an interesting one, but hear me out. It can be Carl Gotch, but the other one was going to be Lou Tez because originally he's Hungarian, so Tisza Lajos, Lou Tez is actually Hungarian, just moved out. So the, those would be my four old school. And for nowadays, I would say Axel Tischer, Tristan Archer, uh who it's also super hard it's also super hard so many walter. good names walter walter gunta definitely and one more who wow <laughs> that's a hard one that's a hard one uh yeah. Mm, hard of course Robert tries to care but that would be too egoistic to say it from the embossed perspective uh, fool that's hard uh, Karsten Beck I would say because he also did a lot of things a lot a lot of things so yeah great little list there now you have made uk debuts uh icarus you were the first to do it as part of uh the world cup qualifiers for wcpw world culture pro wrestling back in the day uh but then you had a, a nice substantial run with ref pro uk uh i suppose icarus tell us about wcpw and then uh dover if you tell us about ref pro Okay, so it was a huge thing because it blew up the YouTube, right? <laughs> and the roster was amazing. And especially back in the days, like I went over and with that locker room, with Ricochet, with Angelico, <laughs> I was like, okay, hey, I'm the smallest fish here. Hey, hey, guys. So I just tried to get as many connect as I, as I could. Had a decent match with Angelico, and and we we became really good friends. And he also helped us a lot in our GWF days. So 
it, it was just amazing. And I hope like, okay, this is going to be the time. So for the next time we can come over and hey, yeah, Arrows of Hungary arriving to the UK and it didn't happen. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was, it was a huge uplifting moment. And then basically we didn't get booked. Like nobody cared about us or whatever. So, and also we're not pushy guys. So we are like, we only going places where we needed. Mm. So I think that was also one of the reasons why we didn't debuted in the UK after that, because we were like, okay, if they're not inviting us, then we're not going to go because it makes no sense to force ourselves into a production, which is maybe not needing us. So, But Renfro UK did come and knock in uh, at one point and you got to face guys like the Hunter Brothers CCK, uh, Aussie Open, among others, and uh, you had Fight Club Pro as well, and you managed to pick up a few victories on uh, your travels. Uh, what was it like competing at uh, Red Front UK during that period? Pretty different from uh, working in Europe. Like it's the whole um, working system, what they're using is pretty different. Like. Uh, they have a lot of shows, so everything happens very quick and everything like in, in WXW, they're, they have their own storylines and they are prepared for everything for month and month and month before you're, you have some ideas, you're you can guess what's going to happen to you in the next six months or stuff like that, but it's not like that in the UK. So you just go there. Okay. The other guys came in like one hour before the show. Let's put things together, go out. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. That was it. So the whole system is pretty different, but, but we, we learned a lot and we learned a lot of new things and as an experience, both both tours was pretty good in the UK. I think I think in knowledge wise and wrestling wise, it held a, it held a ton and added a lot of knowledge to us. And you got to come back uh, this year for the Great British Tag League, uh, where you faced the Smoking Aces, where you must have met uh, Charlie Sterling, of course. And um, then Aussie Open and Destination Everywhere again. I believe in one of them you had travel issues and you literally arrived minutes before your match kind of thing. Uh, tell us about the hassle of traveling and working like that. <laughs> so it's like basically every wrestler knows how to travel and how things goes, but it's kind of like a vintage Arrows of Hunger thing that something will happen and especially when we go to the UK, like every single time something happened. And this especially, it was the London show where we wrestled uh, Connor and Oku. Uh, we traveled 26 hours because there was a storm, there was delay. We couldn't land in London. We landed on the Midlands. We had to train backs and we were opener. So <laughs> it was just pure chaos but at that time i mean after all these years behind us we were like okay just just let it go and just go have fun and and because we love wrestling so much after a while you just you just don't care and it's and it wasn't the first time so we already had so many crazy crazy travels and oh it was just another another fun story uh now you've got unfinished business over in Red Pro UK as far as I'm aware. I mean the smoking aces you did beat them and then they attacked you from behind. Uh, I think it's uh about time you came back over and uh took on the smoking aces once more. Would be really nice, would be really nice. Actually, we still didn't know what the plans are and it's still a random, so who knows? Who knows? We we would really love to return to the UK because we still feel that there is still a lot of things to learn, a lot of lot of things to adapt, and it's and it's always challenging because it's so different, and we are so typical continental Europeans as persons, as identity-wise, 
that it's always challenging to go back to the UK. I definitely think you're one of the top tag teams in Europe and would challenge a lot of the top tag teams in the UK. And we certainly have a fair share of tag teams, but I would definitely like to see you guys come in and take on like the Smoking Aces or FSU have just got back together, Eddie Dennis and Mark Andrews. Yes. Uh, that'd be an interesting matchup. Uh, the Greedy Souls, that would be... Uh, yes, sir. You two would... Two Sasha things. Machine as well. Yep, that's the ones. I think the UK should definitely make this happen in the near future. Uh, who are some guys that you've seen in the UK that you would like to bring into Passion Pro? Anyone that really impressed you uh, whilst you had your tours? We have we have a very big list of <laughs> talent we, we'd like to use on, on our shows. Um, the way it works is if, if we work with someone and if we have a pretty good chemistry and good connection between us, then we are bringing them over. So, of course, as a person, we also uh, really looking after the guys who we are booking. So, uh, don't know if we can mention the guys we want to book in the next six months or so, but definitely the Smoking Aces, we, we would like to bring them over as a team, not, not just Charlie. We are planning Oku as well, bringing over. And we always try to book new guys on every show. So the list is huge also from the UK. So we can always mix, mix people up. That's excellent. Uh, now, one question we like to usually ask our British guests is uh, Europe uh, tour, or, you know, Japan tour, or an American tour. So I'm going to switch it up for you guys. If you can have a substantial six month run in the UK with a couple of the top promotions, Breath Pro Progress, or if you go to the US, a couple of the big indie GCWs, or if you could go over to Japan and work with guys like Noah. Where would you preferably go for those six months? I would say because we already had some runs in the UK and we already had a tour in the US, in Florida. Uh, I would say Japan because we've never been in Japan and it's still on our bucket list. So I definitely go first with, with Japan. Simple answer. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed having you guys on. So, where can guys watch HCW? Because I know they've got a new YouTube channel and a new show that airs. Yes, uh, they have a YouTube channel, and the full shows are for members who donating and basically who are subs subscribing for month. But some of the material, some of the contents are free. Like back in the days, like ACW Underground, which got like seven season or something. And now ACW Wild. Uh, and also you can watch Passion Pro for free on Passion, uh, Passion Pro YouTube channel. And they go check out the Passion Pro Cup, which has just been uploaded today. Uh, yeah. this, the, this interview go out on Monday next week. So it was out five days ago. So if you yeah. haven't watched it yet, why not? And get watching it. Uh, merch, uh, any new merch lines coming out? Uh, where can people buy merch? Yeah, of course. We currently, have, yeah. Go. Yep, we have, we have, of course, the Amboss shirts just came out. And of course, when I'm going to be able to compete again, we will come up with something new. But I'm not sure if the Amboss merch is only, you can buy it only live or? At this moment, yeah, on the shows. It's a really, really nice T-shirt, by the way. I couldn't get one because I was spending my money on the uh, the Hungarian guys, uh, just because they'd say my wife. I, I love her. Gil, yes, I think he's going to be a big star. So is Tiani. We haven't actually talked about the two amazing young ladies that have been coming out, which is Orsi and Ivy Uh Give some of the UK guys uh, a few things about these two amazing young talents. Want to talk? Of course, both of them are, are trainees from the past, let's say, four to five years. And now they they working pretty good. They get their 
their popularity in Germany mainly. And I think they both have a pretty big opportunity and it's only, only up to their attitude if they make it big or not. Because I mean, I mean big. So like both of them could make it really big. Very different girls because they're also very big, powerful uh, young woman. And of course, uh, Ivor Klosky is very more flexible and agile. She does uh, a lot of acrobatics in her match. I, f- I think they're both incredible uh, young ladies. Uh, but guys, uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Dover, Icarus, the Arrows of Hungary. Uh, any final words? Check out Passion Pro. Us <laughs> and check out Passion Pro, yes. And check out WXW now as well to obviously see how these guys are getting on as Amboss in uh, destroying everybody right now. And uh, an, an incredible, incredible World Tag Team Festival final that featured Icarus and uh, Robert Dreiska against the French Adores. And the whole show as well, just amazing. Uh, I, I, I said it on my show, when we, I said it about UK. There does seem to be like the UK promotions could step up another level having spent that weekend in WXW Germany, which was just amazing. So thank you for having us uh, coming on. And uh, as we always leave it, don't feed the trolls. <laughs>